All right, guys. Uh, welcome back to turn three of the Suffrage Project. If you have no idea what this is, uh, it's a Let's Play, only slightly different. And that the viewing community has the potential to impact the way I play the game through a voting system. Uh, in the future, we plan to introduce a um, citizen program whereby people called citizens have uh, special features and the ability to re uh, to uh, win prizes, uh, all sorts of different prizes, including cash. Every game in the future will come with a cash prize pool, and it will be divided up among all citizens. Um, and that's to influence this, the gameplay style a little bit to be a little bit more realistic. All right, so for what it's worth, uh, before I start and get on with this turn, I want to go ahead and announce uh, today. I'm still not sure exactly what it is I'm going to do, but I am going to do a uh, contest. And I will be posting the actual, the, I will be posting a video for the contest a little bit later after I post this video. So just watch out for that. And, uh, yeah, go ahead and subscribe and everything, because that would uh, really help me out. Alright, so where we left off last time, I was actually... Um, I was moving the armies uh, away from the frontier. And you may think this is stupid, but like once again, Romania is not going to attack. Poland's certainly not going to attack, because uh, it would just give me an excuse to conquer them early. And uh, that, and there's a neutrality system, all that. I don't have to actually worry about that. The reason I'm moving moving um, everything back is because I'm attempting to reorganize how my military actually works to be uh, more um, something that I can comprehend a little bit easier, you know. And so, all the frontline armies, I'm going to pull back and reorganize. Uh, I haven't started with the north yet. I'm just going to do the south at first. And along the frontier, I'm going to be putting fortresses and uh, garrison divisions. About two garrison divisions per territory, and then two to three levels of fortress per territory. Um, and I'm planning to do that all along the uh, my western frontier. A bit extensive, but I, I can do it. Don't worry. Alright, so let's go ahead and continue. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording, and I'm going to do most of the turn uh, off camera, so y'all don't have to see like the numerous amounts of, you know, renaming stuff. But uh, after I get it all named and everything organized, I'll uh, come back on and I'll explain to you exactly uh, what everything's about. So. Uh, All right, so I've managed to reorganize uh, most all of the uh, Kiev front, and uh, now I'm just moving my reserve armies in. So. As you can see, I'm, uh, I've advanced somewhat in technology. Uh, I think militia weapons and light tank reliability. Um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna see where this goes. I'm gonna go ahead and take it all the way up to July 1st and end this turn, and um, then I'll start reorganizing Stavka. And after I reorganize Stavka, I may or may not reorganize the Far East, and that'll be it for like reorganization and renaming.
Yeah, I mean, I might be supplying the Germans with rare materials and stuff so they'll build their industry, but I kind of do need the money right now, especially as, uh, you know, I'm not producing any supplies, so I'm having to import all my supplies.